Today I'm going to show you how to manually create a fan chart using Family Tree Maker and Photoshop. This Family Tree Maker can be printed 24 by 36, which you can do at Costco or any of your printing places. Uh, you, it is poster size, so you are able to buy frames for it as well. I have found that most of the programs that I've seen can't create something that I want, so this is going to be a totally manual process. We are going to start off with our base fan chart, which I will put a link to in the comments below. And we are going to then go over to Photoshop. So we're going to open the fan chart in Photoshop, and then we're going to go to our family tree maker so that we can get the data that we want. So here we are in family tree maker. We are going to start with the person that we want. In this particular case is my grandmother. And we're going to create three vertical um, pedigree charts. So we're going to start off by taking my grandmother, going to publish. Okay, in the collection we are going to choose vertical pedigree chart and we're going to create the chart Let's create the first chart okay so I want it layout poster I want spacing perfect generation 6 because this the fan chart is a 6 generation chart and don't change that on any of the uh, data that you prepare because otherwise you'll be in trouble this will not work Okay, we want some pictures, so we're going to choose thumbnails and 3.25. Don't care if we center it on the tree or not, but it makes it easier if you do. It, always include empty branches because you'll find it easier to follow. Include siblings of the primary individual if you want to be showing that, and include spouses. So now we are going to go to the facts. That's that little box that we just hit. Okay, and we're going to go to names and we're going to go to name options and we're going to say we want the middle or the first middle and last names and display the last name in all caps. Okay. And that will really help if you have um, the last name in both caps and non caps which sometimes happens when you're gathering the data um, then this will just make everything consistent. Okay, so we'll, if we hadn't already done something, we would have uh, clicked OK, but as it was, it's already done. So. so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a lifespan. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to add that. Um, when you click on that, you can just put in lifespan. Okay. okay, you can move it up by using this little arrow or down, whatever you want. And now that I have two lifespans, I want to delete one, so just hit the negative. So now we're going to go to birth, and we're going to go to the options. Um, this is how I set it up, my fax label or abbreviation, so it'll be for uh, birth or baptism, whichever, um, and M for marriage and D for death. So we're going to just continue on now. And we're going to do the same for marriage. Go to the marriage options. Set this up the way it is. We would click OK if we're just doing something new. Um, I'll just show you quickly. See the OK comes up. So I'm going to go back to abbreviation. OK and cancel because it's set up. Um, and then we're going to go to death and do the same thing. Look at the death options. OK. OK. So that part's done. And seeing that it's already um, the way I had it. I'm just going to say cancel otherwise you'd hit OK. OK so now we're going to go into the fonts or item styles as they call it. Um, ignore the way they ordered this as it's not going to affect us at all. So we're going to go Arial 18 color black alignment to the left and bold. Birth we're going to Arial 12 color black alignment to the left and we're just going to leave it regular. Death and marriage is going to be the very same as birth and lifestyle is going to be the very same as name. It's going to be Ariel 18 
color black, align left, and bold again. Okay, and if I was just setting this up, I'd be hitting OK, but as it is, it's already set up, so I'll say cancel. Okay, last but not least, and this is one that we're going to have to change depending on which uh, chart we use. Okay, so the initial one is going to be six wide, and you'll see when we start putting it in why it has to be this. Okay, so we'll say OK, and now you can see what your chart looks like. We're now going to share it. Okay, so we're going to export to image, yeah, and you're going to choose where you want it exported to. Okay, so I'm going to do vertical, just leave the name and just put a one in front of it, or one behind it, I should say. Okay, so that's my first chart. Okay, my second chart is almost identical. I have to wait for this to go because what's going to happen now? It's going to ask you if you want to open it or cancel it, and we don't want to open it in here, so we're just going to cancel. Okay. So now we're going to go to the second chart, which we are going to. Oops, sorry guys. We're going to go to the boxes again. So we're going to change that to an eight. Okay. So. That's the only change we're going to make. And we're going to do share export to image. And we'll do pedigree chart 2. And again, we wait until it either says, it says cancel or open. And we're going to cancel again. OK, last thing. Last chart is pedigree chart three. We're going to say none for the pictures. This is the very top row, and you need them skinny, and uh, so you get them into the boxes that are there. So we are going to change that to 14. OK, so now you can see it nice and skinny and long. So we're going to share. Export to image, and this will be pedigree chart three. Okay, we're just going to cancel the open. And now we're done with family tree, so we can close it. Okay, now I'm now going to bring in all of those three pedigree charts. Three, two, and one. We're going to open those up. Okay, looking across the top, vertical chart one. We are going to change the image size. to 200. Okay, we're now going to whoop, double check spherical chart one. We're going to close it and save it. Okay. Vertical chart two. Getting a while to close. Okay, vertical chart two. We're going to go to image size. We're just going to make sure it's 144, 144, and which it is. Okay, nothing I have to do there. Close that one. Don't really have to save it because we didn't have to do anything. Okay, vertical chart three, which is the very top row, which is the thin rows. Um, so we are going to go to image, image size. I want this one to be 115. <sighs> Why those numbers? I have no idea, but they fit, and that's what's very important that they fit. Okay, we will save that one.
Okay, so now we're back to our fan chart and we will open the first one, vertical chart one again. Open recent, pedigree chart one. Okay, let's zoom in so we can actually see. Okay. This is my very first row. Um, what I'll often do is I'll grab a guide and bring it there so I know where I'm working. I'll always put it above. So I found that it's much easier to cut it out of this box and create a new box than to cut the box and try to figure out how to get rid of all of these little extras that are on the side. So we are going to cut inside the box. We're going to copy actually. So do edit copy and go back to our original one. And the first one row is right here. So we're just going to paste it. We're going to create a box around it. And all with a two. So just type in a two and hit enter. And we are going to take it down to the beginning where this is. Um, you can use your guides if you want to make it fit in. Per I just do it by eye. Okay, so now we're going to go start on the second row. Which, and each row gets a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to go back to vertical chart one. And now we're going to go to the next row. And I'm just going to hit fit screen for a second here so I can see where it is. Okay. Paul B. So we are going to go down here. Make a guide just so I will mean, keep the guide just above the line I'm doing. We're going to copy Paul Bayou. Would have been simpler if I would have actually gone in here to make it easier. Grab that again. I want to get to the bottom. Sometimes the guide will cause you grief. It wants to go to it. Okay, so next, Paul. We're going to edit. He's going to be right here. Now there are short cuts to some of the things that I'm doing here, but I'm just doing the menu to make it simpler so we don't have to go between uh, PC and, and Mac. Okay, so Paul, we're just going to bring him here. We want to make sure that he is nice and not touching any of the lines. Okay, and we will now do the next one. So go Back to vertical chart, and this one's going to be way over, so we just keep going. They get a lot closer when you get near the top, but they also get a lot more, which is a lot more work putting them in. Okay, so there we go. Mario Berlin. We will again inside here, copy it, and go back over to the vertical to the fan chart paste it and make the frame. We're going to do this for every single one. We're going to do the stroke and it's always going to be two and then we place it. Okay. And sometimes I'll use a guide just to see how I'm doing there. Move her over just a bit. Okay, so back to the fan chart or the pedigree chart. Okay, we're now to the next row. Again, sometimes it's easier just to just go back to fit screen, and this is my row. It helps to have the guide there. Okay, so I'm going to bring a guide down again so I keep on my the right row. So this one here is Jean Bayou. I'm going to grab him. 
It is very manual and it is time consuming, but you get what you want then. Go back to the pan chart. Okay, this is where we're going to be doing a lot more work. Now we're going to paste it to the frame or the stroke, I should say. Okay, we've got the stroke. Now we're going to go to edit, free transform, because we want this to be on an angle like this. So we kind of line it up with a line first. See, make sure I'm kind of on there, and then just bring it down and place it so that these two little boxes line up with the line that's there. Okay, and now we'll go. Always hit this, commit the transform, or hit enter, one or the other, because if you don't, you'll come back and you have to do it over again. Okay, and we're just going to go over to the side now. Till we find the next relative. There we go. Angel Busk. Okay, so let's grab her. It's going to show you the first few lines, and then we'll just populate it quickly. Here's a copy. And a paste. Put the stroke around it. Minus two and enter. And now we're going to fit her in. Again, edit. Free transfer. Everything that's on the male side is going in this direction. And either hit enter or this little check there. Okay, next one. Back to the pedigree chart. Now we're still on the female side. And there we go. So we're going to grab that inside. Make sure you don't get in line. And edit copy. Again, you can use your short forms if you want. And now that we're on the pink side, the female side, we're going to change it slightly. So let's just edit paste. The direction changes. Every single one of them you're going to be putting the stroke on. So like I said, it is manual. Edit free transform. Okay, this time you're facing in this direction. Okay, and that's lined up. And just hit enter. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you want it as close as you can. Okay, we'll grab the other one. Every once in a while you'll see something that you go, oh, that is wrong. Um, some error happened when we were in. So I am going to fix that up before we get it over there. So Canada I'm just going to get rid of because it's otherwise I'm going to be having to do a lot more work. I know there's a lot of manual things we could do, but uh, I'm not going to. Okay, and that extra little comma there. I could also fix this up, but we're not going to in this case. Okay, so I'll edit copy. And back to the pen chart. Edit paste. Put a frame around it. Or stroke. And again, that's two. And edit, free transform, and bring it over here, and line it up. It is a long process, but like I said, you get what you want then, which is, and down we go. So you get little squares along the line there. 
Okay. I'm just going to leave now as I fill in the rest. Okay, we're back. Okay, so this is all we are going to do with the vertical pedigree chart one. We're going to populate this line with a vertical pedigree chart two and this one with the chart three. So we're going to close vertical pedigree chart one and we are going to we don't need to save it at all. We are now going to go to open recent and vertical pedigree chart two. Now this is going to populate this line. Okay, so we know it's a second from the top line. And again, I'll just bring down a guide just so that I can see where I'm working. And we are going to start way over here with the very first one. Yep, right here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to copy this one. You don't have to make it any bigger than what the, you don't have to make the full size of that. copy and we're going to paste it. Now the thing is here it starts getting more and more complicated because you have a lot to do and again we're going to have this side of the chart this side of the chart all goes in this direction so the bottom is this and this side of the chart goes in this direction so the bottom is this way. Okay, so here we go. We'll start off with the first one. So we're going to edit paste. Going to do our frame again. First stroke, two. And we're going to place it. So edit free transform. Line it up. And bring it down. And we're going to continue all along this row. So, oh, not to bore you, we will now move on to the very last row. Okay, we have now finished this row. As you can see, all of these the male side all go in that direction, and all of this goes this direction, so that went nice and straight across the bottom. So very last row. That's just a lot to fill in. This will take a long time. So we're going to get rid of vertical chart 2 and we are going to open vertical chart 3. Okay, we know we're doing only the top row now. So put your guide in if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. These guys are all a lot closer to each other. Okay, so again, we're going to copy. Just copy what you have to copy. Like, you don't take the whole box. So let's just do that. Edit, copy. This one's different. We don't have to do the stroke. Okay, and we're going to edit, paste. And we're going to do free transform and just move it in till it's fitting right and hit enter or that little check mark I don't know why it's looking a little weird there on my screen but it is fine my screen's adding up so we're going to continue on like that for this whole row here and then we 
will be finished filling in the pan chart all right and you'll notice i have some empty boxes because i didn't have data for those people then i went to the just to finish it off as you notice it it's more to the top and that's because i want to fill in some information down the bottom but we will put in the title I'm lucky I had a crest so I was able to put in my crest I have more ancestors here and I figured because it's the Bayou I was going to add it there so I added my extra ancestors I did them similar to what I did on this row here extra Bayous so right to all the information that I happen to have okay and then i decided that i'd add some across the bottom here uh, for example the children her siblings and my grandpa and so that people knew exactly what was going on i added labels so that's my fan chart and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you are able to make your own. Have a great day.